Hello everyone and welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update on Friday the 28th of March 2014. My name is Chris Nitzo. Tonight we're going to, or sorry, today we're going to look at the rainfall that has fallen over Queensland over the past week. We're also going to look at the future, a weak tropical low developing in the Solomon Islands or forming in the Solomon Islands. Not expected to develop into anything significant, but we'll have a look at what's happening with it. And then we'll have a quick look at the longer term projections. Let's get started. Oh, but just before I do that, I do have to let you know that we have our web store is up and running at the moment and you can access it by going to our website, ozcyclonechasers.com.au, clicking on web store. And we have a range of shirts, stubby coolers and stickers on offer there and along with the pricing down below them. Um, we are having a few more things coming into the web store shortly. We're probably going to look at uh, purchasing a bulk buy of smartphone portable anemometers. This is a pretty cool little gadget because it turns your mobile phone into a weather instrument. So a weather recording instrument. Uh, also some caps and we'll talk about this one in the coming months but this is pretty exciting too. Alright, let's get into the update. It's not just the eastern half of the continent that has received a fair decent rain or the eastern seaboard. There has been some good shower and storm activity over the Pilbara and, uh, and possibly even the Gascoigne regions here of WA. That's associated with a trough and what it's also associated is with the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Gillian. The mid-level trough or the upper level trough here has pushed a lot of mid and, mid and upper level cloud towards the southeast and has created a little bit of rainfall for this region and if you didn't get any rain you're at least getting some cooler temperatures because of the cloud cover which is fantastic because they've had 40 degrees for almost a month in this region. So great news there. Otherwise though the top and sky clear the most of the Northern Territory in fact is devoid of any potential rainfall there in the past 24 hours as we head towards the east this is where it's all happening that upper low over here in South Australia um, has created a lot of rain and storm activity for Queensland you can see here just this very thick cloud yesterday and overnight rolled through now in its wake this in the wake of this thick cloud we could possibly see some showers and storms redeveloping this afternoon and possibly some heavy falls very lightning active if they do form so you can see here this afternoon according to the Brisbane Storm Chasers uh, tropical store, sorry, thunderstorm probability guide that there is a fair chance of showers and storms developing all along the eastern seaboard of Queensland this afternoon. Possibly some of those becoming severe mid to late afternoon here um, in the Herbert Lower Burdekin region, possibly the Tablelands, and uh, certainly towards the southeastern parts of Queensland between sort of the Bundaberg and Sunshine Coast region. Just the chance there of some severe potential in those thunderstorms, and you can see even the tropical possibly being very active storm-wise later on this afternoon too um, and continuing through to the evening although after that things obviously ease off as we head towards 10 p.m. Uh, we see potential dropping significantly so just the chance there's some pretty pretty severe thunderstorm activity Similarly, just the chance of some showers and storms here on that Pilbara coastline associated with the remnants of that trough system. So we could see um, some storms there this afternoon, although not overly severe. But as Pilbara storms tend to be, they're going to be fairly lightning active, you would imagine. Uh, most storms in the Pilbara and uh, Gascoigne region tend to be fairly lightning active compared to storms, say, in Queensland, which are much more moisture laden. Uh, whereas these storms here tend to be a little bit drier and produce some spectacular lightning and look at this it's an amazing sight anywhere in the southeast corner has received pretty well 100 millimeters except brisbane city which seems to have just missed out underneath the 100 millimeter mark but look folks it's just spectacular rainfall and you know we, we've been saying it's going to happen for a while um, and it's just happened exactly the way it's been predicted to so fantastic falls for this part of of queensland and as i said the models have performed beautifully with this particular rain system. Uh, it was always expected to be an eastern and southern and central Queensland event, so that's why the north has mostly missed out on this event. Although we are seeing some pretty decent falls in shower and storm activity up here in the north as well. But uh, overall, it was always going to be a Townsville South event, and that's exactly what it's happened. Um, we've seen falls anywhere south of Townsville over the four days of about 100 millimetres or more. 
some places lucky enough to have copped six or seven hundred millimetres. Maybe not lucky, that, that's a little bit excessive, but six or seven hundred millimetres over the past three or four days, which is just fantastic rain, unbelievable rain compared to how dry it has been. And that rain continuing through into New South Wales is you can see here, all, all the way into northern New South Wales, they've received moderate falls of rainfall as well, even some heavy falls near the border area. So uh, just fantastic rain all through northern New South Wales or northeastern New South Wales and uh, southern and central Queensland. So great news for the farmers, great news for the graziers. These blokes have missed out and these sheilers have missed out uh, for a long period of time. So it's great to finally get some rain. Look, particularly for southern Australia, there looks to be a uh, considerably wetter than average period uh, over the next few weeks weeks according to some of the guidances so you know fingers crossed that some farmers down south get a bit of rain too but uh, nowhere near the extent of what we've seen up in Queensland. Now if we take a look at the week this is the week that didn't end today this was this is the week that ended yesterday we don't have the data for today just yet but you can see over the eastern half of Queensland here no one's missed out really everyone's copped something um, 25 plus millimetres over a very very wide swathe of the state and the same thing over New South Wales very wide swathe of the state uh, has had over that 25 millimetre mark. We've seen some good shower and storm activity, Kimberley, Pilbara, Gascoigne and into the inland parts of WA. We've also seen uh, about a, a few days ago we saw some pretty decent storms developing up here in the top end coast and also the Gulf Country hasn't really missed out. Anywhere over western Queensland, Central Territory and the inland Kimberley, inland Pilbara really has missed out on everything. For the remainder of today, we can see that overall, uh, a certainly a decrease in rainfall over most of the uh, eastern seaboard. Uh, most of this stuff has already fallen, so don't pay too much attention to the 100 plus millimetres expected. Most of that has now fallen in this area and is now pushing offshore as per satellite imagery. But we're still left with lingering showers and storms, and remember some of them could be severe later on today, so just pay attention to any warnings that the Bureau might issue. As we head to Saturday, it, things get even, uh, even uh, lighter and more isolated as we see some dry air penetrating the region. On Sunday, we see an increase in storm activity over the top end of the Territory, pushing into the northwestern coast, and also some moisture penetrating a little bit further inland in an easterly to northeasterly flow. So we're going to see uh, uh, just an increase to isolated shower and storm activity over the Gulf Country and pushing westwards across the central parts of the Territory. And as we head to Monday, that isolated shower and storm activity spreads even further to the west. And we see some uh, showers and storms developing over the Kimberley region as well. Conditions just seriously ease back to pretty well fine across most of Queensland there with some very isolated shower activity. And on Tuesday, some showers return onto the coast of Queensland, but they're once again going to be isolated with very light falls expected. Look, folks, when I do post these charts, don't always focus on the numbers here. We're, we're more focused on where rain will fall rather than the numbers specifically. Um, these falls here, they're going to be isolated in terms of shower activity, but if you happen to be under one of those showers, you might get 5 or 10 millimetres, even though this is saying 1 to 5 millimetres. You know? So just uh, don't take these numbers as gospel just take this idea of some isolated showers returning to the coast as what's going to happen rather than the actual falls themselves. Um, as we head west here, and, and I mean Territorians, you guys would know this and so would Kimberley people, but sometimes Queensland people get fixated a lot on the numbers, um, but you blokes uh, and Sheila's up there know that, you know, if you're going to cop if you're going to cop a storm here, uh, you're going to cop more than 5 millimetres on the western coast of the Territory. You're going to cop somewhere 30 or 40 mils. But even though um, this is suggesting only 5 mils. Anyway, uh, we're going to see a continuation of showers and storms here. Continuation of showers and storms now into the Kimberley, possibly extending a little bit further inland as well. Now, if we look at the total forecast rainfall for the next four days, as I said, most of this stuff over southeast has now fallen. Uh, but we're still going to see some shower and storm activity for the next day or two uh, across the northern part parts um, and as we head to the next four day period from the 1st of April through to the 4th of April we see conditions intensify or, or rainfall intensify in the Coral Sea. Now we'll talk about why that is shortly and we'll see uh, those isolated showers, and, uh, isolated showers along the coastline of Queensland possibly accumulating falls there of 25 to 50 mils but once again remember just depends on whether those showers hit you and also remember with these Queensland ones that it's all dependent on the orientation of your coastline. See, the showers are going to be coming
coming in like that. So the places around Townsville are obviously going to miss out. Places around Rocky are going to miss out. But places around uh, around Mackay, around Cairns, they're likely to cop those showers head on. So um, just be aware of that as well. As we see in the Territory... It, more dry air starts to push in from the early April, but we're still seeing the potential for some pretty decent shower and storm activity on the western top end coast and also heading into the Kimberley. A new trough system, a weak trough system forming over the inland parts of WA here, uh, creating a, a situation where we get some moisture coming in from the north and pushing some isolated showers and storms right into the inland parts of WA as well. So that's the next eight days worth of rainfall. Now let's talk about what's happening out here and why we're seeing that increase in rainfall in the corals. So basically folks out in the coral sea we're, we're looking at a weak trough system that is currently there and we're possibly looking at a weak low developing. Now this is the next five days according to the GFS model. Now the GFS model really doesn't want to develop anything in the area. The UKMET model does develop just a weak trough system, uh, possibly a weak circulation out towards Vanuatu but overall just a weak trough system through the Solomons. And we see a fairly even split with the Navgem model developing a very weak low out here in the Solomon Islands. You can see why we're starting to see the, uh, that rainfall increasing in the Coral Sea here. This white area signalling falls of over 150 millimetres in parts. So there is just the increase of rainfall in the area. Look, there is likely to be a trough system out there. We're just not sure whether it's going to be a low. Um, and then if the low does form, we're not really uh, confident on it developing much over the next, uh, at least the next week or so. The fin model also developing a very weak low there, uh, very weak circulation in the Solomon Sea. The Canadian model does develop a low pressure system and tracks it westwards towards Queensland but then again as you can see here the Canadian model is going a little silly with a cyclone here, uh, the remnants of X Jillian here, a new cyclone here which apparently is tropical um, which can't happen, uh, a new cyclone, a new low over here so it, it does go a little bit silly with these but overall once again you're seeing a fairly, uh, while there's a little bit of disagreement there's fairly confident model guidance that we're going to see at least a trough in the area, possibly a low. Pretty clear on the Euro that we're seeing a very weak low here in the area as well at the five day mark and the Euro as you know is the most accurate global computer model. If we look at the Bureau of Meteorology's Access G model at the five day mark which is where I've been showing these to you so this is by next Tuesday night we see that weak trough system or low pressure system out here right over the top of the Solomon Islands in that Solomon Sea area. If we take a, an ensemble approach to the tropical low or the trough system, you can see by day five the Euro ensemble has a trough system in through here. Um, nothing significant about it. As we head to day seven, we see this this area of troughiness remaining in the Solomon Islands but once again we're not seeing any uh, designated uh, low pressure systems as such. We're seeing more of a uh, trough type based circulation here or a trophy type uh, uh, feature as opposed to a strong low pressure system and as we head to next weekend we see that low or trough remaining really in the Solomon Sea. It doesn't really move anywhere, and this is um, uh, and this is because it doesn't have any big drivers to move it anywhere really. Uh, if if it is going to move anywhere, it's going to move towards the west, towards PNG, or if it misses the southern tip of PNG, it will move towards the Torres Strait uh, and far northern peninsula region of Queensland. So if it does move anywhere, it is likely to move in that direction towards the west. Um, and as I say, at this stage, it's not looking likely to develop into anything significant. But remember, it is in the northern Coral Sea. And while it stays up there away from all the wind shear, uh, and if it can tap into some moisture, it might get itself going. But at this stage, very unlikely. And uh, it is something that we will need to watch though because as we, as we all know the cyclone season goes for another month. In the GFS Ensemble, the GFS Ensemble does not want a bar of the, of the, uh, or, uh, the Solomon Islands low and instead it, does, it is seemingly keen in its longer term forecast of developing a tropical low off the Kimberley coastline and tracking it uh, towards the southwest initially uh, and some of the model guidance 
develops this into quite a significant system and then splits as to whether it continues moving southwest away from WA just like Gillian did or whether it pushes more in a southerly direction which is the climatological average. So uh, folks there, there might be something left there in the cyclone season in April but at this stage the MJO isn't all that favourable and it at the moment we're relying on uh, pure fluke, pure chance and some westward moving Rossby waves to be the catalyst for development of these things uh, and they're always very much hit and miss. So if we look at the equatorial Rossby wave at the moment we can see that it's likely to actually spawn a tropical lower cyclone in the northern hemisphere and normally what we what we see when when we, these things happen on a Rossby wave we tend to see uh, almost identical type systems in the northern and southern hemisphere directly opposite each other and that's what we're going to see although the Solomon Islands one just doesn't seem to want to get going so we're going to see a tropical lower cyclone developing up here in the West Pacific um, and at the same time frame that we're going to see the uh the uh, the tropical low in the Solomon Islands but the one in the Western Pacific looks like it might get itself going the one in the Solomon Islands looks like it won't get itself going unfortunately uh, and we can see here the Rossby wave as it pushes westwards you can just see the track here as it pushes slowly to the west um, and spawns a low up here and that weak and that weak trough or low in the Gulf uh, Gulf of sorry the Solomon Sea between Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Islands so this is a chart by the way of outgoing long wave radiation so the blue signs on this chart suggest cloudy rainy stormy conditions uh, and the orange suggests not cloudy the are completely the opposite so um, these are anomalies so when we see the orange it means it's less cloudy than normal uh, when we see the blue it's much more cloudy than normal with much more thunderstorm activity than normal when we see the white it just suggests we've got pretty normal conditions out there Looking at the latest projection of the MJO, it's currently in phase one, it's in intensifying, it's expected to get into the Indian Ocean, intensify further into quite a moderate signal and then just before it gets to Australia it's expected to die and it has been continuously been forecast to do this. Uh, for the last couple of uh, for the last week or so so that hope that we have and it's we still have it there are still outliers that suggest it's going to get into Australia and it's still going to be active remembering that the MJO in phase four and five and six is what we want to see if we want to see some more rain towards the end of the season and possibly some cyclone chances towards the end of the season um, otherwise we're relying on those Rossby waves to create something for us and they're not always going to do so in fact they hardly ever do so so, uh, folks, that's the MJO. So we might see some activity over the Indian Ocean, particularly over the central Indian Ocean. Might see some uh, some cyclones developing there in the next couple of weeks. But at this stage, the uh, the Australian region, as we head towards mid-April, is still not looking all that flash in terms of cyclone potential or rain potential, just because uh, the MJO dies so suddenly as it heads towards us. If we take an even longer view here at the latest European ensemble, we see that the MJO really does die, and by the time it's in phase four, five in the Australian area, we see pretty well uh, the, the the signal is so weak that it really isn't even in phase four or five at that point in time. So it's having very minimal impact on our weather. There are still outliers, and as we say, there's always hope with these outliers. And there's a there's a fair few outliers that suggest it's still there. Uh, and if that does happen, we will see cyclone potential increase as we head towards middle and later parts of April, so very late in our season. But even last year, I believe we had a tropical cyclone uh, named at the early part of May or the late part of April. So it's not unheard of that we'll get a cyclone potential increase if the MJO can stay strong. So folks, that's all we got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed the rain. hope it's fallen where it needed to. And I hope to talk to you next Tuesday night for our next Cyclone video update where we should hopefully have a pretty good idea by then as to whether the Solomon Islands low will do anything or whether it'll just uh, meander about and eventually die. Thanks for watching and we'll talk again Tuesday. Goodbye.